think the first thing to say is that um, I think the statistics say that it's 80% of doctors overall uh, rather than just GPs, and indeed that is across the UK. Um, I don't know what the statistics are on the island. I would be surprised if it's that high uh, on the island. I think mainly because there is a lack of um, recent education and indeed a lack of experience of um, either handling or prescribing um, medicinal cannabinoids, which is the medical term for the cannabis-related um, uh, chemicals that are that are out there. Um, the legislation on the island is slightly different, um, and we are f trying to follow the UK, but the reality is that the only people who are allowed to initiate prescriptions for this sort of medication uh, are doctors who are seen to be on something called the specialist register. And my understanding is that there is not one doctor on the island as yet that is on that specialist register. So as far as I'm aware, there are no prescriptions being initiated. GPs would only be allowed to prescribe such drugs once those drugs had been initiated and stabilised by a specialist. Um, and of course, that hasn't happened here yet. So there's a lack of experience and undoubtedly, therefore, a lack of confidence about prescribing these drugs. And so do you think the island needs to have someone on that register you were mentioning there? I think there needs to be an increased awareness and an increased level of education, uh, as the speaker yesterday um, said. Uh, undoubtedly, I think we need to know more about it. I think there is a degree of uh, nervousness, and I think most of the public would understand our nervousness in prescribing um, chemicals which are very closely related to a drug which um, hitherto has really only been used illegally uh, by patients who are um, often uh, addicted to other substances as well. Um, we all know the controversy about uh, the addictiveness or otherwise of cannabis compared to other particular um, addictive medication, particularly it's compared, isn't it, to smoking and alcohol and all the sort of socially more acceptable um, substances that we consume on a daily basis. But the reality is that our experience um, in, in the main uh, of users of cannabis are in people who are, tend to be addicted to other things as well and tend to be uh, unstable in, in many ways in terms of um, having mental health issues, uh, emotional issues and other life issues. So our experience is very skewed in that direction. Uh, and I think that uh, there's a long way to go until we're at the point where we're confident enough to be using these particular drugs uh, in a more medicinal setting. And you mentioned education there. And this was something uh, the professor picked up on. Uh, do you think that is one of the keys? Do we need more education or do GPs, as it stands, get any education or continuous training on the use of cannabis in a medicinal way? I mean, they don't at no. the moment uh, because um, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It's, it's all, at the beginning of any new type of treatment, there is always this dilemma of how do you uh, increase awareness amongst a, a population that isn't prescribing it and how do you increase confidence when there is so little evidence of confident prescribing? Uh, there is very little evidence of confident prescribing in the UK uh, or and certainly not on the island. Um, and so uh, doctors need need to uh, really have the experience of colleagues, probably specialist colleagues initially, uh, in the prescribing of this medication with all the benefits and all the pitfalls and all of the side effects and all of the difficulties with prescribing. Um, and that experience needs to be shared. And I suspect that is going to take time. But yes, I think I would be as encouraging with cannabinoids as I would with any other new medication that we should uh, have an opportunity to um, be educated and have our confidence in prescribing increased. And presumably there could be a danger. I think sometimes when you hear some of the recent press coverage of this idea that it might be some sort of silver bullet, it, there seems to be little doubt it can be very beneficial in certain cases, but presumably there is no such thing as a silver bullet for a lot of problems. I think that's right. And I think as with a lot of these um, medications which have been used recreationally to solve or, you know, to try to solve all sorts of life problems, of course there are going to be claims made. There is a huge potential commercial interest in this, of course. Uh, and so there are going to be large claims made. The understanding that I have, and my understanding I have to say is limited at the moment, as with all my colleagues really, is that the benefits are very limited and at the moment the license will be very limited to very specific conditions. My, my understanding from our pharmacy advisor at the department is that um, uh, the particular drug Nabilone, which has been used most in the new UK, does have, for example, a significant percentage uh, of significant side effects uh, in many patients that have used it. And so until we understand that the pro versus the cons of using this particular drug uh, and the particular risks associated with it, again, that's going to affect our confidence in prescribing it. So an educated introduction perhaps going forward. Do you feel just amongst your own colleagues you were saying there that there is an interest in it or a belief that this could be 
beneficial for some moving forward? Yeah, I mean, I think we all have anecdotal experience of certain types of patients having used it either uh, recreationally or indeed therapeutically, but done uh, from themselves or privately, where there has been benefit. Yes, the difficulty, of course, is that the numbers are so small that it's difficult to know whether they're statistically significant. Um, and uh, and so, yeah, as I say, we, we, we have an interest. Uh, I think that interest is a cautious interest in the knowledge that this is a complex issue in a drug that has primarily been used in the illegal market previously, is known to have uh, both side effects uh, in, in, the, um, in the recreational sense. We know that there are dangers associated with, with cannabis, despite those who would minimise that. We know that those are present. Uh, and we're hearing that there are significant side effects, even with the prescribed uh, chemical, which has been obviously modified to make it safer. So, yes, there is nervousness around, but there is an interest in trying to see what uh, benefit we can get in a safe way uh, from this particular group of drugs.